This is my milling machine. It's a good old wrong foo. It's actually the name tag says it's a VM32. This is a bit odd because I can not find anything on the internet for a VM32. I think it's similar to an RF30, a wrong foo 30. Um, or RF31 uh, but I've seen some differences in the videos that I've seen for RF30 and RF31 milling machines compared to this one. So this video is on the alignment for this machine. You can see it's on a custom type of stand. It's a stand that I've built for this particular machine and I stripped down the whole machine and put it all back together, replaced the spindle bearings, um, you know, gave it a good old going over. So this video is more about um, after I'd stripped it down, put it all back together, it's aligning the, the head. We need to make sure that the head is straight up and down with the, uh, with the, with the table. And I know for sure that it isn't uh, one because when I stripped it down there were a whole lot of shims that came out of the you know with a with a with a pillar or the column to bolt onto the base so that's one thing the other thing is when you are using a cutter and the the head is perpendicular to the base you will get the cutter going across and you'll get um, opposite or the back of the cutter skimming across the top of the you know where you've already cut and I know that does not happen uh, here. In fact, you know, one way it'll cut across, and the other way it'll cut, and the back of the cutter will, will cut over the top of it, um, you know, a lot deeper than just skimming the top. So I know it's tilted, you know, if you're looking at it, the top to the right a little bit. So that needs to be fixed, and I don't know which way it tilts um, back and forth. So. This video is to f figure out what that is and to correct it by adding shims uh, where the column bolts onto the base. The first thing I need to do is uh, remove the vise and the um, table guards. So I've taken those off and uh, I know what you're thinking. What on earth happened to the table? Well, yes, there's a lot of damage there, and unfortunately, that is how it was when I purchased the machine. That said, I think there's enough of the original table still there to support the uh, vise. I just use the uh, table guards, you know, on the sides of the vise, just so I can lay my tools down without, you know, damaging any more of the table. So you can see in this shot, we've got the uh, dial indicator there. So that holder is something I made up uh, in one of my previous videos so if you do want to have a look how I did that um, I'll leave the link down in the comments. Another thing I want to do is just give a shout out to Ben from Ben's workshop. I'll leave his link down in the comments as well. So I was looking on YouTube for how to align the column. I know this column is you know way out so if there were any tutorials or anything like that out there and the only video I could find was one he did and unfortunately with these column mills um, you know there's no adjusting screws or anything like that so you have to basically um, loosen the four bolts where the column bolts onto the base and then you know put some shims under there so today's uh, video is about how we go ahead and do that and how we uh, work out how much we need to adjust it and to try and line it all up. You can see I made this part of the dial gauge holder quite long and the idea was that I could you know read way out on this um, left hand side and then swing it around and read way out here on the right hand side to make sure that we're pretty flat. Um, or perpendicular to the to the mill head here. Uh, thinking about it a bit more, the first thing I need to work out is, you know, how low or high we are, and then I need to kind of work out how much shims I need to put under the column where it bolts on. And I think if you uh, 
have the dull gauge way out here on the ends, you're getting more of an error. You know, there's uh, the difference between measuring it here and measuring it way down here will give you more of an error than if you had measured it closer in the center here. And because the column goes down and it bolts on by four bolts, it's about between six or seven inches. I can only adjust the column within that square envelope where it bolts on. So I think what I need to do then is just measure within the square envelope as well, if that makes sense. Because if I measure, you know, the X within that envelope from here to here, and I work out that I need five, you know, five thou out or whatever it is, then I could put a 5 foul shim there and it should be pretty close. Now I know the table is higher than the base so maybe that would cause an issue as well. I'm not too sure but that's the sort of approach I'm going to do is I'm just going to go within that window, that square window we have which is the same size as the where the column bolts onto the base and I'll do the, um, the X and we'll work out what that is and then uh, put those shims in and then if it if it's pretty much zero, then that's kind of the method we'll use. I just realized that the window that I was drawing on here probably won't work for the y-axis to be honest. So for the x-axis I can line the center up with the center of the column. So I know the table is right in the middle and you know where these lines are here on the outside uh, is basically where the edge of the um, column bolts onto the base. So we're shimming based on the center line I guess. Whereas that won't work for the Y because now we're offset from the Y. So I think just a bit of trial and error with the Y. Uh, but certainly we'll um, stay within this range for the X axis here. The style gauge here. Uh, you can push it from the bottom, but it doesn't come right through where you can lift it from the top. You know, you have to hold this up as you turn it round. So, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to use the dial indicator for just the touch off. So I know that when it just starts to move, we just touch the table. Um, and then I'm going to use the DRO to tell me the difference uh, between this end and this end. I know the high spot is on the right hand side here, so what I'll do is I'll turn the dial indicator around to this side, I'll just touch off, zero the DRO on the Z axis, and then we'll come back round and we'll touch off on the left hand side, and then that'll give me a, um, should be a pretty accurate reading of how far we're out. Um, from the performance, I know this is a long way out, so um, so I'm expecting a kind of a big number. Okay, that tells me we're 1.2 millimeters. That is huge. That's like 60 thou or something like that. That is a big number. Okay, so I'm inside the window here. I think I put a 1.2 millimeter shim on this side of the column. Then that will tilt the head that way and would lower uh, this side and lift that side. So let's try that and We'll see if that um, gets us, you know, within the ballpark of being a lot closer.
Okay, so this is what we got. I've um, loosened off the four bolts that go around the pillar. Um, this is the shim, so this is 1.2 millimeter shim that I'm going to put under here. I'm going to slide it in and the bolts will, you know, um, come up to about here. So that gives us plenty of room around the bolt for support. Um, the original shims were sort of in between the bolts, uh, which probably left a gap at the end where the bolts are bolting down. And I think that could be problematic. Um, you know, you don't want to crack the cast iron winding them down too hard. It's a really tight spot, so I'm not going to be able to film putting it in because the camera's right where I need to be right now. So I'll get this in and then we'll um, come back when it's in and we'll do some more measurements. There's the shim in place. Wow, that is amazing. That is probably within a quarter, half a thou difference now in the X axis. So bizarrely enough, 1.2 almost bang on was the right amount. The next step is to try and work out how we're going to do the, the Y axis. I'll bring the camera back around the front and we'll have a look at that. In the X axis we were hinging basically on this on the center line but we can't do it in the y axis because we're way off center here so um, I think the approach would be just to find somewhere on the outer edge here on you know both the front and the back of the table um, and then just go from there so basically the center of the uh, chuck here would be in, in the center of the table so I know this is going to work, but I'm just got, not going to get like, um, you know, a number like the 1.2 millimeters I needed from there because we had it in the window. I knew exactly how much to put there. Um, I don't think we're going to have that on when we do it this way. So maybe take a little bit more time and effort to do this one here. I think. Okay, so that looks like uh, 185 micron. So that is, I think, 6,000. Okay, so I've pretty much got the alignment done. I think I'm within half a thou to a thou across eight inches. I actually don't know what uh, you know other people have recommended on the internet. I'll have to go and have a look. But I think that is pretty good. I tell you what, it's um better than being uh, 1.2 millimeters over 8 inches out, isn't it? Anyway, um, I'll put everything back together and do some uh, cuts and see how it looks. But I'll just uh, quickly show you what I did. I'm just doing this freehand, so you don't have to drag the tripod around. Um, so I don't know if you can see that there. I've uh, got the 1.2 the millimeter shim. I've put the other shims underneath here. Uh, these were all sort of 2,000 shims or something like that, so um, I had to use three or four of them. And on the other side, I've just um, I've just put them in the back there like that. But anyway, I'll um, run some cuts and then we'll come back and I'll just let you know how we did. You saw me milling up the uh, test piece there, and I am very impressed with uh, the results. I'll probably put up a, a closer shot, but I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So I did two passes, uh, the top side here, going from left to right, and then come down and went from the right to left. But if we look at the, uh, the top third here, you can see... Um, the cutting is in both directions, so uh, you know you've got the cutting tool. Don't know if you can see this. Maybe write it on here. So you've got the cutting tool doing this type of stuff, and of course, as it's going across, uh, the back side of it's doing that type of stuff. So that's the sort of pattern that you that you want.
and that shows you that your tool is perpendicular to the work and you're not getting um, you know a big sort of scoop well probably be very hard to see a scoop in something this wide but you know if you had like a, a large fly cutter um, then you would start to get that kind of scoop in the middle if you um, you know if the machine was still left untrammed the way it was as we go from uh, the right to the left we see we overcut the, um, or you know, half of the um, first cut. And same pattern, so that's all working very nicely there as well. And I cannot feel, uh, you might be able to see that line down the middle there. It might show up quite, you know, significant on the camera, but um, there's nothing there. I can't feel a line or anything there from, from the two cuts. So I am very impressed and I can just hear the cutter it just makes so much of a different sound now glad i got that job done it's sort of been on the list for a little time so i had to build that indicator holder first before i could get it done but we did that and got the job done thanks for watching